Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show, and I'm delighted to be here with you today, and I want to thank you so much for sharing your time with us. I know it's extremely valuable, and you have lots of things to do with your time, but I promise you today you're going to go away with a unbelievable amount of inspiration and um, hope to be able to do things that you might not have realized that you could have done before. So we're really excited t- today, and I want to say hello to Amnon. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm fine, thank you. What's up? How was your week? Oh, my week was fine. Good. And yours? Mine's just fine, thank you. Good. And how was your week out there? I know it's only Monday, but, you know, take what you can get. And it depends on when you start your week anyway. Some people start it on Saturday. Some people start it on Sunday. I actually, maybe every day is a new week, so who knows? Anyway, you know, we always um, come here with fantastic ideas and topics for shows, things that, um, you know, help us, help each of us have the most fulfilling human life experience. And in that regard, we come away with a bit more freedom, a bit more choice, a bit more confidence in ourselves to do whatever it is that we think we cannot do or haven't tried to do. And sometimes we need somebody else, not just to give us permission, but to show us how and to show us that what we might have thought about is possible. And I think that's why it's so cool when you get together in a community of people that are sharing ideas and resources, because that's, you know, that makes it all, all the more better and juicier. So today, my guest is a really cool guy. I mean, just think about this. He traveled the world starting with an apple. He bought a home for free. He's traveled the world for free. He's challenged by the experiences that he has each and every day of his life to travel and to meet new people and to have extraordinary um, experiences along the way. And I think that's just great. And I love to travel and I would love to travel. But for many of us today, it's expensive. I mean, an air flight can be $2,000 without, you know, shedding anything. So there's all kinds of ideas that we're going to strum up today. And to find out how you do this and, and, and all the fun that you can have along the way. So my guest today is an award-winning author, a filmmaker, and a journalist. His name is Michael Wiggy, and he is from Germany originally. He is now living in Hawaii, in Honolulu. He has bought his home for free, and I can't wait to find out how he's done that and how he's done everything that he's done. He's written two books, so I want to welcome Michael Wiggy to our show. Michael, welcome. Welcome, Marilyn. How Thanks for the invitation. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Right. My pleasure as well. Hi. Hi. So first of all, so the, you're, you've written two books. The first book is called How to Travel the World for Free, right? Right. First one, How to Travel the World for Free. And basically, that's a trip, you know, traveling the world, uh, 30,000 miles, almost 30,000 miles, without a penny in my pocket, you know, no money for food no money for travel, no money for accommodation. So it was a trip absolutely without cash. And it was a very interesting adventure. Wow. And then the second book, and we're going to get into all of this. So the second book is Mm. called what? So the second book is How to Barter for Paradise. So basically, this is another world travel. Um, I did pay my flight, so it's not a, a, a travel for free, but I traveled around the world, 14 countries, and I've started with an apple in my hand, a bitten apple, actually. <laughs> I, w- I was hungry, so I took a bite. And then I started bartering for bigger and better. So, you know, my question was, like, if I exchange it, if I trade it, you know, like, in a, in a very, you know, special way, if I find the right people, if, if I get the right ideas, can I barter this bigger and better, bigger and better to finally get a house in Hawaii? That was my dream at that time, to... Uh, have a house in Hawaii and I didn't have money so uh, I tried to do it by bartering and that's book number two how to barter for paradise so tell me from the very 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 beginning pre-books pre-travel okay you're Mm. a journalist you're doing all kinds of things what what sparked you to do this where did this come from Right. I mean, I've always been a traveler. So traveling is pretty much my profession profession as like a travel writer, travel reporter for the last 
12 years, you know, traveling itself has been a passion for like almost 30 years. You know, I'm 37. So I've always been, been, been traveling with my parents way, way back when I was small, as a teenager on my own, in my 20s, in my 30s. So traveling it, itself has been a big thing, but also uh, sort of like reaching certain goals, like like living a dream. So it has always been my motive to you know, live my, live my dream. Whatever dream has come up, I try to realize it. And, you know, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not easy. So some people call me like, a, I don't know, a challenge seeker or a dream catcher or something. So, yes. Yeah, so I, with these two big projects I've done, I really try to realize my dreams traveling the world without money and, and getting a house in Hawaii. So and that's what I went for. And yes, I can really advise everyone to go for their dreams. So we're going to, I want to kind of go step by step and how you did things, but so do mm. so your dream was to travel and how, where did the traveling with no money come into it? What how did I mean, how did that come up? Right. I mean, you know, like that trip at that time, it, it, it was from Europe to Antarctica. So it was not once around the globe. It was from Europe to Antarctica, you know, across 11 country so basically my my dream was you know to really see antarctica the most secluded place in er, on earth you know only like 25000 people have ever been there no one really lives in antarctica and i wanted to see that place you know like it, it was it was thrilling for me so going to antarctica normally is is very expensive you know like you need to book the flights and even cruise ships cost like $10000 minimum to just you know put your foot on on antarctica so I thought, okay, I'm, I'm broke. I don't have the money. And then I developed the idea, let's do it for free, you know, without begging, you know, develop certain strategies, you know, how to travel the world for free. I want, I want to see the world for free. I want to experience how people perceive me when I, when I travel without money. And I want to, I want to perceive uh, how it is to really travel the world for free. So that's, that's how it started. So what was the, where was the first place you went and how'd you get there? So basically, I started in Europe, you know, hitchhiking. So hitchhiking and, and, you know, the food was a little bit difficult at the beginning because I went into dumpsters with, you know, like, like supermarket dumpsters. So that was not really so pleasurable, pleasurable. But then I figured out something else. You know, um, I pretty much went into uh, re- restaurants, cafes and shops and I started barter deals. So, for example, I said like, oh, I like your muffin here. Uh, in that cafe, do you think I could clean clean the dishes, or I can tell you a funny joke, or I can do some other service to get that muffin or that sandwich? And I realized, as long as you go with with the barter system, it's pretty easy. People like to join a little game, a little barter deal. So that's how it started. And uh, from Belgium, uh, like Germany, Belgium, and then. I pretty much got a job for like like a non-paid job on a container ship across the Atlantic to Canada, Montreal. So that those were my two uh, first or three first weeks. You know, it's interesting because I'm sitting here. You know, one of the things I'm um, I'm always amazed about is that people don't ask questions. In most of parts of their life, I mean, they make assumptions and they go through assuming this or assuming that of somebody or making something up without ever having to ask. And you had, I mean, you had to ask for everything that you wanted. Right. You know, shamelessly, yes. you know, shame, you know, just like, just ask no matter what. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, a trip like that is, is, is nothing for a shy person. So uh, you have to approach everyone and you have to explain everyone what your dream is. But by explaining the dream, I, I want to see the world for free. Uh, people get attracted to it. So, so you explained, if, you explained, so if you went in to, buy, to get a muffin, you explained mm, to the baker that you were hungry and you were doing, you were traveling the world, for, you went through the whole story. It was important because it really helped. So to, to tell the whole context, it makes it much easier than just going in into a place and saying, oh, do you have something? So basically I told my goal and I've actually went further. I had like this little like laminated a paper which said like Michael Wiggy wants to travel the world for free in three languages. So with like a lemon, it was laminated and a signature in these and it 
sort of made it look official. And that really helped that people said, oh, yeah, you know, it's written as well. So people uh, like uh, sort of official stuff sometimes. So uh-huh. that helps. Yes. Uh-huh. So, so, did you tell them that you were a journalist? Uh, like a challenge seeker, more like that, you know, like a challenge seeker. And, uh, you know, I'm, sometimes I probably told, yeah. So I just want to remind everyone, this is gonna, this is great. If you have a question as we go through the show and, you know, how do you do this, how do you do that? Or, you know, how would I do this? How would I do that? Or whatever. Just call us. We'd love to hear from you. You can call us at 919-518-9773. You're welcome to Skype in with us on voice. That's computers. Plural, that's plural, the number two, K, voice. We'd love to hear from you wherever you are. I don't care, Timbuktu, wherever. Just let us know. We'd love to hear. If you have any experiences doing anything like this, please you know, let us know that too because that makes the conversation all the more juicy. And if you're listening to us and watching and you notice that we have a chat room, please sign in. Let us hear from you from there. You're welcome to Communicate with the people in the chat. It's always very exciting, and you can ask questions from there as well. So, ultimately, what did you learn about people from this process? Uh, in the process of traveling the world for free, yeah. de- definitely um, the world is pretty much a good place. You know, like uh, more than 100 people did help me, you know, f- you know, although they got something out of it, but not, you know, sometimes they didn't really get anything out of it. Just being part of that story. So the world is a pretty, pretty much better place than maybe sometimes the media or the news mm. tells us. You know, if you watch the news, it's a collection of, of negative news, you know. Right. News are negative. That, that's that's the nature of news. So so the world is much better. You know, you have to be careful, maybe not wander around nighttime in, in big cities or something like that. But, but I mean, people were, have been really good. And I've also learned, you know, there is... There is uh, there are, there are possibilities to live without money, you know, like there are different concepts. You can barter, you can share, you can, people gift. So uh, there is much more than just going to the supermarket with your wallet. Mm. And do you think it's different for a woman than it is for a man? Um, I, often people ask me this question. So obviously I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have not been doing this as a woman. So, um, but it's difficult to say. I mean, a woman could come into the situation that a guy offers her or whatever, and then things turn a little bit funny. I could imagine. Um, that, that, would, that would be bad. But it could also, you know, women can be very independent. I've seen a lot of independent traveler, more female than male. So maybe even women could do this better. I, I'm not sure. So it's a very tricky question if I should advise this for women or not. Mm. Uh, I've done it as a man. <laughs> so... <laughs> And you came back as a man. And I got you back started as a, man. as a man, you came back as a man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so we no, have a question. We have a, can do it. we have a question on the chat that um do you have a wife or a family? No, at that no, I don't. I at that time I had a girlfriend. Okay. And how was that, you know, having a girlfriend? Um, I mean, it's a challenge, you know, when you're gone for half a year, uh, and especially without money. So you, you you cannot really grab the phone because the phone would cost money. But, you know, there are a lot of things for free, like like as we do Skype now. Uh, I did Skype with my girlfriend that time. And, you know, I just had to find a free Wi-Fi network, which was available in many countries. And then I could log into Skype and then we could communicate. So, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the half a year, it was a little bit difficult, mm-hmm. you know, you really want to see her again, but uh, it, it did work out. It did work out, you know, as long as you can Skype like at least twi- twice a week or something, you uh-huh. know, it's fine. So, ha- so you started with an Apple, right? So and that's what, the second trip. Uh, that was the second trip. So what, the first trip, what did you start with? The first trip was starting without anything. It was okay. just traveling for free. That was Berlin, Antarctica f- for free. So you, you, to, can, oh, you consider... Starting with an apple, not for free. And uh, now, okay, the nature of the second trip, how to butter for paradise, was a bit what, what was a bit different. It was not about traveling for free. The second trip was about traveling the world again, and 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 you know, bartering this okay. apple for bigger and better. So it was it was not a free travel. I see. So the first one was about free. There was no yes. no no sense of bartering. It was just how how you know about traveling with nothing. 
and, with and, nothing. With nothing. And, I exactly. See. I did that first trip on how to travel the world for free. I started with the barter system, you know, like, like I just explained. Oh, you go to the cafe, you offer a story, you offer a service. And, uh, you know, and since I got to those experiences in how to travel the world for free, you know, like a year later, I thought, OK, the bartering was so good and it was such a great tool. So could I maybe do another trip and barter something small, bigger and better to reach my dream house in Hawaii? Mm. Okay. And then I started for the second trip. Okay. So I, I, mean, I, I want to tell everyone there was this great um, excerpt from a Jay Leno show that Michael was on that was really very, very cool. And he actually was sitting next to Katy Perry, which was also really, really cool. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. And she was really pretty. So he was, you, you mentioned about the gar- going into the, what do you call it, garbage dumping? Uh, dumpster diving, yes. Dumpster diving. So just go into, a, I know you mentioned that earlier, but just for, for those of, of our guests that are just tuning in, what was that again? So basically it's one option, you know, as a traveler without money, you can do to get food. So in, in many countries in the United States or in Europe, you know, the supermarkets, you know, basically throw away a lot of food, even if it's still sort of okay, because the, the, the customers, you know, they don't want food, which is only good for another two days. So, you know, supermarkets do throw away a lot of stuff, unfortunately. So if, if you manage to get into one of these dumpsters, it's, it's a little bit uh, like, <laughs> like paradise because it's sealed stuff and it's like you can find everything and it's good. <laughs> and it's not, it's not funny food. It's really good food. So I got huge bags of food I never imagined out of these dumpsters. The only tricky thing is you need to go into a dumpster and it can, you know, not everyone would like to do that. You know, a dumpster is smelling. But if you do this pro- project like this and you travel for free, it's, it's a bit like paradise. Yeah. Did, <laughs> a dumpster can be like paradise. Really? And did you have a plan of anything like du- du- uh, dumpster jumping, diving? Did you have a plan right. for this ahead of time? Did you know you were going to do this? Did you seek certain things out? Were you observing the way people lived or how things went prior to actually going on this trip? Um, yes. I mean, it's a mixture. Some stuff was spontaneous. You know, I met people who introduced me to certain stuff, but I, it was, I had a big planning period, like almost a year. So I figured out, you know, free food, free accommodation, free travel. How can I do this? You know, and then I researched, I talked to people. So I got strategies. I had a lot of strategies um, you know, like, uh, yes, a lot of ideas I, I, I took on the trip. Like, I mean, you, you just mentioned the, the Tonight Show video, like Jay Leno showed these, these pieces of me pillow fighting and doing sort of like services <laughs> no one really does, you know, like pillow fighting for a ticket, you know. So I really developed these ideas beforehand. You know, mm-hmm. I, I had a strategy plan. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a question out in the chat. Like, so what was your expertise about bartering? Like, where did that come from? Oh, there, there wasn't one. So basically, trip number one, how to travel the world for free. I just, you know, I just tried it out without any expertise before. So I, and there I realized, oh, I can barter my service for like a cookie or I can get food. And, and so there I, I was a beginner. And, and since that worked out so well, in the second project, How to Butter for Paradise, I started becoming like the butter pro, you know. So it didn't go easy at the beginning when I started buttering that apple for the house. But uh, I got into it and you learn and learn and you, and you realize, OK, you, you have to look out for your market. You know, if, if you have a product, you, you, you butter it somewhere, you know, you need to know where to butter it, what to offer to it on top. So I really got into it uh, by learning by doing you, you know, it's, it's so interesting to me because, I mean, I really generally, I really love people. And I really see the good in people. And I think sometimes right. we don't give each other either enough credit, or we don't get close enough to each other to see the mm-hmm. good or to get past the fear. You know, everybody is walking around with level, not everybody, many people are walking around with levels of fear, but we all have some kind of fear. And we don't allow mm. ourselves necessarily to, to break through that with each other by either asking the right questions. And what the and the, what you did was you at, you exposed yourself and other people in their in their vulnerable states, and you allowed yourself to be goofy, 
you allowed yourself to be caring. I, I mean, we're going to get into some of the stories because I'm sure you have some great ones of, you know, some of the people that you met along the way. But it's so it's just it's it's so con, um, convincing to me, I think, that you could do what you did with people mm. all around the world and end up where you did. And, and just it just goes to show you that people are genuinely good. They do want to connect. You can mm. find that thread of connection between all of us, that what I call that invisible line of connection. You created it. I mean, and I think it's just fantastic. It's so confirming right. to me. And it's very important that you mention fear. I mean, if, if, you know, I just mentioned, you know, like reaching dreams, that's maybe my message, you know, like, like live, live your dreams, you know, live, live your dreams, you know, life is short, live, live the dreams. And one obstacle, you know, not to reach dreams uh, not, or not to live your dream, it's fear. And, uh, and it's fear. I mean, we, we all have it. And sometimes fear can be very helpful. You know, fear can tell us, oh, there is something dangerous. You know, fear can be good, but, you know, the, the, the measurement of fear is not always right. So, so many, many of us, you know, don't do stuff because of certain fear and sometimes very subconscious fear. And so it's like, ah, let's not do this because who knows, it could be dangerous. And that mm -hmm. keeps us away from a lot of good things. So mm -hmm. uh, to overcome a certain fear, to reflect if there is some f fear going on, which might be too strong, exaggerated, that's a very important lesson in, in life to learn. Mm -hmm. And then life can be so exciting and a lot of things can happen. I mean, I'm really glad in my case here, like that I overcome the fear, you know. What was your said, fear? Okay. What was your fear? I mean, there is there can be fear like, OK, I go to a country, I don't speak the language, you know, uh, the, 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 the fear of the unknown. I don't really know how it is there. Oh, I saw something on the news. Oh, are those people good? You know, so there is fear of obviously without money or something. There is fear things can go wrong. So mm -hmm. um, many fear, many fear. Or so, fear to lose the girlfriend uh, while I'm gone. You right, know? Right, fear, right, right, right. So you right? had so, you had so you had specific fears prior to you embarking on these journeys. Is that right? Yeah, uh -huh. that, that has come up, and I worked on it. And you worked on it th through the journey. Before and through the journey. Before. Right. What was and, the and biggest, dissolved. well, what was your biggest fear? What was your biggest fear before the journey? Ah, to obviously get into trouble. You know, without money, you are more vulnerable than, than, than traveling around the world in an airplane or in a, in a train, you know, which is paid. So you are vulnerable. You have to approach people, you know, and so you're always expose yourself. So, you're out there and you know, it could be risky theoretically, you know, if you, if you bump into the wrong people, but um, yeah, that was probably the biggest fear. And was that a hard fear for you to break? In other words, was it a fear that was standing in your way of doing the trip? I mean, it's like before every trip, you know, doubts might, might come. If you do something very extreme, uh, uh, doubts come so i i've done other trips I've, i went to uh, indian tribes in the, in the in the amazon rainforest to africa i went to like conflict regions in the world like political conflict regions and yes just before there is some fear all of a sudden like mm -hmm. oh is this right to do this right now or is it maybe too far out so uh, it can be healthy the fear but sure. uh, you know it's but it's important to look at it if it's if it's maybe exaggerated and as I'm listening to it, so I'm wondering, so is, do you, so are you a man now that say you're free? Do you still have, I mean, cause what you did would just rip you open. I mean, you'd have to be just at your most vulnerable state. So do you come back now and are you just as free as a bird? Um, it definitely, it definitely, um, every kind of trip like that definitely, uh, helps or like or gives you something for your life so if i you know I've, I've, I've been you know traveling for free for half a year then bartering that apple for the house that was like a seven months trip so these trips adding up to a long time on the road mm -hmm. so yes it's it's mm -hmm. a good i think it's a good time to develop personality to learn more about yourself to to get more life experience all these right. people all these uh, cultures, uh, 
to to lose sort of prejudices, you know. Mm -hmm. We all sometimes have prejudices, you know. So right. it's just a good it's just a good time to right. to move on. It's really good time. And I'm sure, you know, going on your own is one thing and then even the opportunity to travel with somebody could add a whole nother element and perspective to this whole process. You know, I wanna um you know, when I'm listening to you, the other thing I think about is a lot of times people talk about money being a, an exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you do you know what I mean by that? Uh, 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 just, just, just say a little bit more. Please. You know, it's an ex <clears throat> it's all energy. Everything is energy. You know, it's, right? Right. So money is an exchange of this energy that we experience. And what you actually did without money is you really your currency was energy. Is how you, right. you know, how you communicated the dynamics that you that you are about the things that you ex feel, you mm -hmm. you your currency was feelings, your currency was your actions, not something like money, you know, it was your right. energy, it was your vibration, right. that was your currency, which I think is ex so extraordinary. I mean, it really it's people to people. I'll always people to people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Wonderful. And, and getting into the people, you know, and building up a relationship with them, you know, for every barter deal, for every, everything there, you, you, you build up a relationship. You know, it's not like, hello, just let, let's, let's do this quickly. That doesn't work. So, so you really, both, both sides learn to understand why is that guy doing this right now, you know, and I, I learn to understand what people think. Yeah, it's, it's a great process. Wow. So are you still, now that you're in Hawaii and home, and, you know, certainly we have a lot more to talk about, but uh, somebody on our chat, I think Michelle maybe is asking this question. So what do you, do, do you barter now? Is this still a part of your life? Um, uh, to be honest, it it's not. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it, and I'm very open, like uh, like the other day, something coincidentally was like, okay, you, you know, do do this service and, and I give you this. But it's not that I live my life just bothering. I, that, that wouldn't be true. So it's, it has been really, I have been curious, you know, how is it without money and how is it to barter something bigger and better? So really uh, uh, framed in a time frame. So this is how I do it. I'm, I'm always, you know, putting myself in an experiment uh, I, w I want to do this, you know, uh, like, like I just said, like I've been to the Indian tribes in, in the Amazon rainforest. I lived with them. You know, I put myself into that situation for, it, for a time frame. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's more about a time frame and, a, and, and, a, and a certain projects than about an entire lifetime. So you're not only a challenge seeker, but you continuously challenge yourself. And, uh, and uh, life. And life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So tell us what is what was something the funniest experience you ever had while you were doing this? While I was doing these trips, yeah. uh, the funniest. I mean, uh, oh, huh, there, there were many. Uh, there were many funny ones. So uh, I could just tell you what came. Oh, there was one thing. I was in Peru traveling for free, and I wanted to see Machu Picchu, the famous Inca site. So I didn't have any money. So I worked as a porter for the tourists to 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 carry their luggage uh, like over these like 13,000 feet altitude mountains in the Andes, like 50 miles. And it went wrong. So you can see it as funny. You can see it as horrible. So I was not trained enough to do this, but I wanted to see much a picture for free. So basically, when, when we walked up to like 13,000 feet altitude in the Andes, I was like, I, I just... I pretty much passed out, you know, with that luggage on my back to, to get that uh, destination for free. It didn't work out. So people had to help me to, to reach. Uh, <laughs> so people had to help the porter to, to reach Machu Picchu instead of the porter helping the tourists. So it was sort of funny, you know. It was a little bit ironic, the whole thing. But, yeah, I've seen it. I, I, I arrived at the Inca side. Wow. So you and so that was the funny what was the most the most serious experience you ever had or the most difficult experience you ever had um i mean for example you know i i crossed the united states for free and on that money for free trip and i reached albuquerque and i, I stayed with a homeless person jo joseph in albuquerque so he introduced me to the homeless scene you know it's, it's sort of like it's supported mainly by the church 
Back in Europe, it's mainly supported by the state. So it was a very interesting insight how the, the, the homeless get help, get help here, often by religious groups. So I could stay with him. You know, we, we, we got food from, you know, from, from those institutions, but we had to sleep outside. So it was like sleeping in Albuquerque in, in the park. Some drunk people walk by. The, 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 the water system goes on at 5 a.m. To, to water the, the lawn. And, and so it was like after, after three days, it became a little bit serious. And I, and I realized, you know, for me, it's only a project. But for Joseph, the, the, the homeless person, this is reality. And it can be really hard. You know, if you have nothing, you know, life can be hard. So this was definitely a serious aspect. Yeah, that would be, I mean, understanding that there's different levels to our society. And then, you know, it's kind of like having an underground life. You know? Definitely. You know? for, yes. And for me, you know, I once took a, um, I was leaving my daughter's home in New York and I had to take a taxi and to the airport. And I went like at four o'clock in the morning and the gentleman that took me to the airport, I mean, his, his shift was all night. And for him, he lived, he lived in, in darkness because mm. every you know, and then after he got done, he would meet his friends and they would have breakfast and he would go home and go to sleep during the day. And I wouldn't like that at all. I would, I mean, I couldn't, wouldn't like being in darkness all the time. For him, mm. he was normal. Mm. You know, so there's a whole oh, other yeah. world of people we don't even understand. Oh, you know? it's, it, it, yeah, very important. It, and it's so easy to forget these different parts of the world, different, different you know, economic levels. Uh, I mean, let's say we live quite well in, 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 the, in, in, in Europe or in the United States, uh, but there are like 50% of the world is, is pretty much still in poverty. So, so, for example, How to Butter for Paradise, I haven't spoken so much about that right. project. I went into uh, Daravi, which is the biggest slum in Asia. It's in Mumbai. And I looked into that place to, to, to look how people, people barter because people live by the barter system in Daravi. And you see Daravi is a place, it has like a million and a half people on like a square kilometer, like a really small place. And it's packed and it's really poor. And something like that, to, to, to look into the poorest part of Asia, that was pretty much the poorest part, biggest slum in Asia, uh, that was quite as distractive, I must say that. It was really, uh, it was a different, it was a very different thing. Like, you know, we don't see that normally. And, mm. and uh, people live, 10 people in a very small hut, for example. And, and that was something, yes, the life, the, 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 the world can be quite unfair. Let's mm. just face it, you know, it's, it, it's not always in balance. So, so they really barter for survival. Yes. So you know. I went in there, you know, because, you know, I researched and it, and it was said like there were, there were like groups of people, they barter for survival. So bartering is a very uh, helpful tool um, for survival. So there I, I, I met these women, they barter so certain plastic goods, like a plastic, uh, um, like, a, you know, certain plastic goods randomly random plastic goods and they bother them for clothes for like second hand clothes and that's their business so they always do the plastic for the clothes and it's it's a business that works out for them otherwise they wouldn't have a chance to 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 survive and uh, uh i interviewed them and yeah they, they told me yes this is the only way to really pretty much survive if we wouldn't barter the, the plastic for the clothing uh, there would be nothing we could do. And uh, I also talked to other people who lived in times of a war, in different wars in the 20th century. And they explained to me that the last um, resort to survive was bartering. So in, in times of crisis, when there is a war, when there is like really, really difficult poverty struck situation, people start uh, uh, bartering uh, mm -hmm. as a last resort. So let me ask you something, Michael. Do we need money? Well, can we just get by like this? Uh, the, oh, the, that's the, <laughs> I mean, no. it, would be, it would be a cliche to say, no, we don't need that. And let's live this alternative life. You know, the, the system we, 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 we run in, it's a capitalist system. And it somehow works for, for our societies. It's, it's not like it wouldn't work. You know, it, it sometimes brings unequal tendencies into the world. But, you know, it does work to a certain extent. A little bit survival of the fittest. Huh? That, capitalism. Yeah? So it's one of the systems, you know, 
it's like you, you can argue about it. Is it good? But we've seen communism didn't work out, so that's that. Uh, like in Central Europe, if you look at the continental Europe where I'm from, it's this kind of slightly different approach. It's more like capitalist system, but with a social overview. You know, like so, like it's more like. It's a little bit different, a little bit softer. So there are different approaches of, of the world, and we will see in in the 21st century what's going to make it. Um, I'm, I'm glad I had my experiences, but to be honest, right now I have the wallet in my in my pocket, and after this interview, I'm going to go and buy a coffee. So I'm in the money business as well. Right. What's better? I think it's good to look at different. Uh, possibilities and to see, you know, for ex very good example, like right now, if you look, you know, online, the barter, the barter system is getting very popular. So uh, I give you three examples. For example, people like sharing, people share cars. There are many companies mm -hmm. now starting, you do a certain car sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like you, you just get the car for an hour, you put it back. It's not like a car rental, it's like a car sharing between a group of people and you have that with many other things like tools you find internet pages you know what why do you want to buy an, an expensive tool for three thousand dollar if you use that chainsaw once a year in that whatever in, in your garden or whatever so people share these tools mm -hmm. so this has become quite a quite an economy so i think it's very interesting to follow that that there are a few changes and you know and it's not just about buying anymore. right and I, and I would and I'm thinking while you're saying that that with the barter system I mean there is somewhat more I don't know if it's more of a balance in 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 our in what we take and what we give as opposed to with money I mean maybe with I'm I'm guessing with the barter system you know you 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 have to really want something <laughs> you know uh, you know, to, to, to just compare that, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, uh, the barter system, to be honest, it, it is a bit more complicated than the money business because mm -hmm. the money business, you go to the supermarket, it's one minute thing. So if you barter, uh, two people have to like each other, two people have to trust each other. You you have to find someone who needs what you offer so the whole thing get can get a bit more complicated. So it's a different right. story. Uh, money makes it sort of very easy, shortcut, but it's much more... Uh, there is much more about bartering, so it, mm -hmm. it is it is such a huge uh, experience. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Even just to, you know, I think part of what I love about this whole conversation about freedom and being free to make choices, and you know, not being stuck in one place, but to have the the power, the self power, to be able to do different things, is just the knowledge of how something mm -hmm. that something even exists. And I mean, I don't pay much attention to bartering. Occasionally somebody will, you know, barter with me, let's say for coaching, you know, they'll give mm -hmm. me some kind of, you know, service. I'll give them a little coaching, you know, it's certain things you, you, mm. you kind of do, but um, to the extent that we're talking about it and how far you can take it is, is fascinating. I mean, you'd have to just say, wow, this is really very cool. I mean, it just opens up my imagination to, you know, hmm, is this possible or, you know, how would my husband and I do this? You know, how do you barter for a flight? How do you, can you barter for airline tickets? Oh, sure. You I mean, can, you can do that. How do you that. do I mean, that? I mean, if you barter for, I mean, uh, if you barter for an airline ticket, I mean, I can just sort of make, make it up now. I mean, you, you just uh, approach people. For example, I've, I've done one. Was like, like when I was in California and I, I met the son of a pilot, you know, and the pilot retired. So basically... Uh, uh, I, 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 I offered some, some service and, and, you know, the son spoke to his dad, the, the retired pilot, and he gave me a standby ticket. So, so there is something, you know, you need to find the right people who have access to flights. And, you know, in my experience, it, it's like a, re a retired pilot from a major airline. They have these, all these standby tickets. So that's something. And then you just need to see what does the pilot need? Mm -hmm. You know, is he maybe, is he bored? You know, does he want some entertainment? Is the, oh whatever is the garden not 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 really fancy? Maybe you need someone who who works in his garden, for example. So you just need to look what what would he need and offer him mm -hmm. something like this, and then it worked. I mean, I I got that airplane ticket, San Francisco, Honolulu, and returned for free by bartering. You got to be real creative, 
And you really got to observe and listen in order to be able to fill in the gap of what might, of what somebody needs. So we have a question. You mean, you don't have to answer this question, but only if you want to. Uh, Debbie wants to know how old you are. Oh, 37. 37. Oh, I didn't hear you say that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And, And another question I have is you use the word paradise. Why the word paradise? Um, in, 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 in which context? Like, um, in bartering for paradise. But yes, I mean, this was like bartering for paradise because, you know, it was, you know, like I said at, at the beginning, it's a, it was about my dream, you know, like it was a, it was a childhood dream. Oh, let's, let's get a house in Hawaii. Uh, and so I bartered for paradise. It was not just a house somewhere. I wanted to have, you know, I, I felt like having a little house in, in, you know, Hawaii, which which I would call sort of paradise. And so it was more than just bartering for a house. So in, in that in second okay. second story I've done, uh, it was about paradise and it was about a dream. And dream and paradise are, are closely connected. I think many dreams sort of could relate to the word paradise. I mean, it, it doesn't just have to be Hawaii. It could be... You know, just just the, the dream job could be paradise or the dream circumstances you would like to live in and, and, and uh, the dream things you would like to do. This is pretty much paradise. Mm. Yeah. And I would guess, you know, just the uh, just the, the, the ability to be able to see the world, to conquer your dreams or not. Con- well, conquer your fears, have your dreams is, par- is paradise. It's paradise. You know, that's yeah. paradise. So. Uh, I want to read a quote that uh, Chris just put on the chat, which, okay, I lost it. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Evolution and all hopes for a better world rest in the fearlessness and open-hearted vision of people who embrace life. John Lennon. Oh, there you go. There we go. There you go. There's Michael. He's That's a, interesting. He, fearlessness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. John, and it was John Lennon. Jo- who's John Lennon? No, no, was it John Lennon? Yeah, yeah. John Lennon. Oh, yeah, okay. that's what he said. I nice quote. Yeah. So and you did say that when you crossed uh, the continents, you cross water. When you cross water, you were you worked on barges. What did you do in, in how to travel the world for free? I, I worked first on a cargo ship from 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 Europe to uh, Canada. 12 days, you know, I worked in the engine room uh, helping oil change of that uh, 23,000 horsepower machine. So it was quite adventurous to learn all these things. But that brought me from Europe to, to Canada. And I worked on a, sh- on a second ship from uh, the southern point of Argentina all the way in the south to Antarctica. It was like a luxury cruise ship. And I worked... Um, Uh, as the assistant of the expedition leader. So I was sort of taking care of the tourists. And uh, yes, so two times I crossed the water. You got, I mean, you had some good jobs, but at the same time, you know, you embark on this type of journey. You cannot be proud. I mean, you've got to be creative and you cannot be proud. You know, you have to use any, uh, you know, anything you can get. What were you going to say, Michael? Um, No, no, I I just agree. Yeah, Yeah. like, uh, exactly. Like, to like some creativity and um, something like that. Yes, on 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 trips like this, uh, it's good to not not be. I don't know if I, if I use the right word, but not be too vain. You yeah. know, if you say like, oh, I don't want to do this, whatever. Uh, no, nah, I mean it's like you have to maybe keep some self irony and say, look, I'm gonna do this now, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes I even. You know, I, I worked as a butler. So, for example, like, you know, I was <laughs> what, a butler what, for... What did for you an, not do? And, what did you not yes. do? What did you yes, not do? Would you have done anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, working as a butler was such a great tool. You know, it was a, it was a butter deal. You know, I'm going to be a butler for a day and you just help me with this and that. And so people like that. Oh, he's our butler. And I had the costume with the bow tie. And so I could, you know, drive people around, clean their shoes. So... People enjoyed it. It was entertainment for them, you know, service plus entertainment. Mm-hmm. And th- that made it happen to, in, in a lot of uh, situations. So, you know, not to be too, too vain, just, you know, some humor, some humor in it can, can help. Right. And, and for many of these people, they didn't have to get pay you. It was just their time oh, or, you right. know, a, a muffin. I mean, come on. Yeah. It really? was an exchange. Yeah. It was an exchange. Yeah. Like for, so, for example, I've, I've been the butler... Um, 
of an ambassador in Panama. So, and, and you know, he had a big garden party, ambassador's garden party with a lot of important people and with the butler and people had to, had to you know, they liked it. I thought, what is this guy doing here as a butler? And so they chipped in for, for a flight ticket to South America. So, yeah. That's cool. So, okay, catch us up um, to where you are now and how did you get your house for free? So, yes. So in the second story, How to Butter for Paradise, basically I had 42 butter deals. So, you know, I started with an apple, you know, back in Europe and apple turns easily into a book. You know, someone has a book, says, give me the apple. The, the, you know, the book turns into like a bottle of wine. So at the beginning, it's quite easy. But then when, when the product is bigger and better bigger and bigger, you know, you really need to get strategies, you know, and then all of a sudden you get some uh, uh, motorcycle, then you need to bar barter the mo motorcycle, then in India I got like 250 feet of silk, I could barter that in Australia for like a valuable <laughs> painting, then I met this this billionaire, like I approached a billionaire in Singapore, he bartered gold, so I got gold, and so on and so on, so 42 steps. 42 steps, always a little bigger and better. Uh, additionally, to, to my bottom deals, I offered services again. Like, like I offered like, okay, you barter this and I'm going to be your butler. Or you barter this and, and I'm going to carry these like, like in Africa. I was in Africa at one stage and I helped this coffee producer to, to, to carry his, his heavy bags, you know, from one side of the company to, to another side. So I was really heavy work the entire day. And he said, okay, that, that, that really convinced me on top. And so we do that barter deal and you're going to get, you know, this more valuable product for me. So this went on 14 countries. And then I, uh, uh, at the end, I had nine different products when I, when I arrived in Hawaii. And four of these products went to a house so it was like two ounces of gold, a surfboard, and a ve very valuable piece of art from New York City. And five of my products I had at the end of my barter uh, trip went to a property, a quarter of an acre. So it was like one ounce of gold. It was a very, very valuable case of porcelain from Brazil. It was a, oh, a, a high-class watch, like, like a $6,000 watch from Los Angeles. And so on, like, so five products went to the property and then we, I found this guy with a truck and he said, okay, I do this for free. We're going to put that house on the truck and I drive it over the island. And then we put that house on that, on that lot, on that quarter of an acre. And then the story was pretty much done. So, you know, no stranger, do you? What does it mean? I know a stranger. In other words... You, you're comfortable talking to pretty much anybody trying to figure, I mean, and making that connection. In order pretty to meet much. these people, in order to meet these people, I mean, you have to be open yes. to meeting people. But, I mean, you don't just find the son of a retired pilot just for the heck of right. it. I mean, you're talking to people, finding out, you're interviewing them along the way, finding yes. out who they are, and then you figure out how we could help each other. Yes, uh, but there was one more trick I'm, I need to tell you. When we okay. talk about the barter story, yeah, but when we talk about the barter story, you know, and it, like, a lot of people ask me, like, how could you find these people who traded a house and a, and, a, and a quarter of an acre property? How could you get in touch? So there, it's not just about, oh, I talk to people on the street and I ask around. There, I used the media. So I went to the newspaper in Hawaii and they put me on the title page, luckily, and said, you know, like, a, like, a, like an article barter man seeks house. So for something like this, to barter like your dream, you need to get and reach out to the public. And this is, this is a tool I used, you know, to reach out for the public. And I was on a TV show in California. So people knew, oh, there is this guy now in, around. He's bartering for his dream. So that is one very important tool to get out there and to really uh, approach uh, a, a bigger uh, potential, you know, like, like, Thousands of people. Wow. So you just, uh, you don't know any limitations. You just, you, you just say, okay, I need this. How am I going to accomplish this? Uh, all right. I mean, I mean, setting a goal, having a strategy, going for it, 
and then if plan A does plan A doesn't work out, go to plan B, B, C, or D. But you, that, that's maybe the short strategy. Right, right but now. you don't always know the strategy until you meet the person, or you know, the, then that one person, you know, you get what you need from that one person. There's this exchange, and then you think, okay, what do I need next? And you create a strategy, but you can't be so mm-hmm. tight into that, tied into that strategy that if it doesn't oh. work, you don't go to another strategy. You're open oh. to it. You just have, you, you got a carrot in front of your, you know, yourself, and you go for that carrot. If that, you know, and if it doesn't yes. work this way, you go another way. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm talking, yeah, right. I'm talking about strategies and planning, which is a very important tool to be able to do that. But never lose, uh, if, you, if, if people do something like this, never lose your spontaneous, sp- uh, spontaneity. Like, you have to be spontaneous and not miss out on, on spontaneous things along the road. Right, you know, right, right. Too much, right, right. Too, too much like a, like, like a goal and a plan, you don't see what just comes up here. You right. don't see that the person in the cafe next to you right. somehow could be very interesting, you know, for something new. Right. So it, it, is, it is a thin line to keep a mixture. Focused, planning, the red line, but always open to what's, you know, what else. And sometimes you have to throw over the whole plan and just go 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 for something spontaneous that is that is, i think that is an art i don't say i've always done this right i missed out on spontaneous things sometimes you know because i was too stuck on the plan so yes but that is that is the major art mm-hmm. but that's and that that method is good for anything that we do that's the that is that is the roadmap for life in general regardless of whether you're bartering or you're mm. just living your life. I mean, you know, like just this situation here with Amnon. You know, Amnon had this opportunity. I took it. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew that it was an right. opportunity. I said, wow, this is a great opportunity. I took it. You know, you've right. got to take those chances. And then if it doesn't work, then it takes you to something else. Or, you know, maybe, you know, God forbid if it didn't work with Amnon. But maybe through Amnon I met somebody else. I mean, you have to... Keep opening up those doors. And the mm. other thing, Michael, is, and I mm. want to say this because, and then I want to, I want you to share about your books again and all of that, you know, bodacious, shameless marketing. But the other thing to keep in mind is even though Michael is a journalist, he's a personality, he's had a TV, you know, he's been on TV and all of those things. That is not a ticket to, to having accomplished that. He's gutsy. He went after something. If it wasn't this way, it would be that way. It, I mean, it could be that for anybody, anybody out there who is striving to accomplish whatever it is you accomplish. It's not, you don't get to do it just because of where you've been. You know, you have to create that whole new path. You know, it might have worked for him. It might not have. He might have had to try something, a billboard. I mean, who knows? But he would have tried something else to have gotten you know, to accomplish his dream, right? Oh, yeah, right. Definitely right. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, what I could say to that is like, the more you go for your passion, you know, uh, the the, the, the easier it is to reach uh, your goal. So this is like, so pretty much maybe let me say like this. I mean, I've done this and I've done the other one and, and it's, it was great. And, but, but I still say like, uh, uh, Dreams and goals, everyone can reach. Everyone, you know, it's like it's like for everyone. If like we stop, we, we talked about fear. We talked about the plan. We talked about being spontaneous. Like these are a lot of very interesting elements, and you can place it in every part of life. It doesn't have to be a house in Hawaii or whatever. But it's like if you talk about dreams and goals, you know, everyone can do it, and everyone can can just say this is this is the dream of my life, and I'm I'm very certain. With the right attitude, everyone has the ability, you know, you know, like mm-hmm. overcoming fear, mm-hmm. keep keeping spontaneous, having a strategy, you know, a lot of things. And yeah, everyone is 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 able to to to, yeah. to, to live right. to live his life. Right. And that's interesting because having a strategy and being spontaneous can look like two opposites. But they mm. really aren't. They go hand in hand in tandem of each other. You just can't get attached. And, I, and, and mm. the, this big point of his about uh, uh, being able to accomplish your dream is he knows it and, and he's accomplished it. And that could mean that anybody 
by meeting the right people, by putting yourselves out there, by asking the right questions, by taking one hand to another hand to another this to another that. That's how it's accomplished. So where can people find you and your books and all of that kind of good stuff? Um, right. So basically there are like these, these two books, you know, like it's like the how to travel the world for free and then how to bother for paradise. And I got two domains. So one is how, how to get a house for free dot com. If you go on there, you get a lot of information, blog, and everything about how to get a house for free, which is the how to bother for, for paradise book and uh, video clips, etc. And then there is how to travel the world for free dot com. And that is about the, the, the free travel. Mm -hmm. So these these two domains uh, pretty much cover and you know obviously on Amazon and all, all the other book uh, markets there's there, there are like uh, my books yeah so I so you've done this now what do you do next to make money and we have like another minute or two for you to tell us yes oh the, the, you know it's interesting you know I, I, I moved here to the United States and I you know like recently and uh, luckily I got a very long visa so it's you know I, I, I can stay here do do stuff so and actually, I want to give this further, you know, like, so I've, I've, I've done, like, you know, all these goals and dreams, and I, I want to give it further to other people. So I'm I'm just about to start in the, in the speaker scene, and I I would like to become a life coach. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah, I, I want to, you know. Good for you. I, I want to give my, I, I want to get my mission out there. So, you know, instead of, maybe I do another story. You know, I got a few other dreams. You know, maybe I work on another story. Uh, but actually, I would like to give this further. So mm. this is pretty much what I'm just thinking about, you know. Mm. Um, um, it's show, showing people, like co like maybe coaching people and, and speaking about it. I think this is mm. this could be very um, fulfilling for me, but also helpful and fulfilling for others. And, and I really think um, the, the, the American culture, the way the American culture is structured, uh, dream-oriented, goal-oriented, uh, uh, individually, you know, I think this is a, this is a really good place. People take this positive and say, "Oh yeah, I want to hear that," and you know, and and I like to reach. I, want, I like to live dreams, you know, like you know. Well, let me say this. American dream, you know? Let me say this. I and I completely agree with you. And I think I'm a coach, and I work with you. Are, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I work with anybody about anything, pretty much. Um, mm. Men, women, children, couples, families, businesses. <laughs> Not a what? Uh, not a football coach. I'm not saying. Well, you don't know that. I'm inspiring. No matter. But it's. A, I'm inspiring. And the thing is, which I can see in you and for you and for anybody else that you work with, you. You know, the, the idea is you've you've been there, done that. So mm. you you're a, you're an example. Mm. And that's how I feel when I talk to people about myself. Like I really feel like I was set up throughout my life to do the work I'm doing. To be able right. to share what I share, because I I see it, I feel it, right. I know it exists, and I can see the dream, I can help people get there, and I can and we can feel good along the way. Do you know what I mean? Right. Break through the fear. So you do coach about goals and dreams. Oh right. yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. What do you think? This is what this, this is why I'm so passionate about freedom, because mm, I know, because I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. That it's, that it's more than possible for everybody to be able to speak up, speak out, to live their life however it is that they choose to live it. Fearlessly, lovingly, passionately, you know, I'm beyond a shadow of a doubt. I, I, I believe it for everybody. Now, does mm -hmm. everybody want it or is everybody able to do it? No, but I, I see it. I see Very it for good. everybody. And I would say that for you... Speaking would be huge. Right. It's huge because of the, the mountains you climbed and how you've right. done it. And I think it's, it, and, and I'm happy to talk to you more about it because I think um, it, would be, it would be very important for you to do it. I mean, right. and, and the thing is, you already have the books. You already have mm -hmm. done so many things. It just, it makes perfect sense. It makes sense. And it's, perfect it, sense. For me, it feels like, Giving this further now. Huh? This is how it feels, you know? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's... perfect sense. And, I'm, you know, I'd love to talk to you about it because I think you should without Thank a question. You. Yeah, absolutely. And we that's need we, people need people out there that can communicate this because it's, mm. sometimes it's hard to ex explain it with the words that we have. You know, the feeling right. of freedom, 
You know, everybody says, well, how, how do you explain that? You know, how do you share that? I mean, how do you go and talk about that? You know, mm. but um, right. and there are ways. I mean, and people who who can understand will understand. People who won't may not right away. But, right. you know, we still have to be out there and, and be telling the stories. Right. So um, I would, you know, we, we should connect a little bit more about it because I think uh, you've got something huge, huge to talk about. And I want to thank you for sharing here. And Thank you for the interview. My pleasure. I loved everything that you talked about, and I appreciate you doing this. And I thank everybody out there for being here with us today and sharing in this, in this moment. Because I know that my life is different, and I'm guessing and hoping that your life is different as well because of what you heard today. So, the sky's the limit. There are no, you know, we only place, we place limits on things, and the sky's the limit. So go out there and, you know, stretch the limits of whatever there is for you and let us know about it. And we look forward very much to seeing you here next week because we have another very special guest who also stretched the limit and is uh, living his, his dream and his freedom. So we'll see you next week. Michael, hang out a minute before you don't leave right away. Everybody sure. else have a sure. wonderful day. If I can help you, click above my head and just write me. So see you soon. Bye-bye. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, and if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com Sponsored by thatvidblasterguy.com carolinaapparel.com and deltaforce.net